Hello, friends. I'm happy to report that about 20 Dharma friends from around the country recently completed a 10-week-long Total Chart Dharma course. This virtual class was offered in collaboration with the One Institute Graduate School. During the final class, we discussed one of the intriguing lines from the chapter on timeless meditation, give rise to a mind that, even while responding, does not abide anywhere. What on earth does this mean? My immediate answer is, let your mind function without attaching to any thoughts. Respond to all sensory conditions from an empty, calm, and clear state of mind. Well, does this state of mind sound possible or simply aspirational? So san said, this may seem extremely difficult, but if we come to understand in detail the methods of a practice, then it becomes easy for anyone. The entire chapter on timeless meditation expounds that our true mind is always with us. And through the threefold practice, we give rise to our true mind. Give rise to a mind that, even while responding, does not abide anywhere. This phrase is originally from the Diamond Sutra, an important Mahayana Buddhist wisdom text. There is a famous story about this line, and it involves Huineng, the sixth Dharma patriarch in China. Huineng was illiterate because he did not have any opportunities for education. One day, while delivering firewood in the market, he heard someone reciting a sutra. When Hui Neng heard the line, give rise to a mind that does not dwell anywhere, he was awestruck. From that day, he started his Dharma journey and became an enlightened teacher. Responding without abiding anywhere, what does this mean? When I go to the Raleigh Temple, my computer automatically finds the Wi-Fi connection there. Before the pandemic, when I went to the One Dharma Center for a conference, my computer also automatically found their Wi-Fi connection. Why? How? Because I entered the connection data previously and my laptop instantly responded to those Wi-Fi's in Raleigh and upstate New York. In the Chapel Hill Temple residence, we have two Wi-Fi signals. When I am in my bedroom, my computer has a better connection to one signal. And when I'm in the kitchen, it has a better connection to the other one. Under the same roof, as I move back and forth between different rooms, my computer often gets confused about which connection to choose. This causes my computer screen to freeze in the middle of Zoom meetings. So I often click on airplane mode to clear the computer from its prior attachment. Then the computer automatically updates to the strongest Wi-Fi signal available. 
my mind also often requires me to go into airplane mode so I can abide nowhere and fully connect to the present. The click button for airplane mode for my mind is a moment of a pause and meditation. Every morning before meditation, Patty reads this scripture line, Settle both the mind and the energy on the elixir field, the Tanzan, in order to allow the energy flow and to guard the focused mind. Lack of attachments to even the single thought of abiding on the Tanjan field, resting only in the genuine realm of consummate quiescence and non-discrimination. Responding without abiding anywhere off the mat as well as on the mat can mean being present without getting lost in the past or future, being with your true self without being dragged around by ego-driven thoughts and emotions, releasing preconceptions and lingering ideas Tune into present awareness. In the 7th century, a monk named Tok San was a well known scholar of the Diamond Sutra. One day, when Tok San was traveling, he encountered an elderly woman who was selling rice cakes. The elderly woman asked Toksan about the backpack full of books he carried, and Toksan boasted about his extensive knowledge about the Diamond Sutra. Toksan was then hungry and was about to purchase some of her rice cakes for his lunch when the elderly woman said, If you answer my question, I will give you these rice cakes for free, otherwise I will not sell them to you. She continued, I have heard that the Diamond Sutra says, the past mind cannot be grasped. The present mind cannot be grasped. And the future mind cannot be grasped. So which mind of yours wants to have these rice cakes for lunch. Master Toksan was speechless and had no rice cakes that day. What about us? Could we respond to the rice cake lady with a mind that does not abide anywhere? Neither the past the present nor the future mind can be found. Why? The Diamond Sutra says, because the minds the Buddha speaks of are not minds, but are simply called minds as an expedient. The minds the Buddha speaks of are not minds, but are simply called minds as an expedient. Our minds arise by dwelling on five aggregates, form, sensations, perceptions, impulses, and consciousness. Our minds dwell on what our eyes see, what our ears hear, what our nose smell, what our tongues taste, what our bodies touch, and what our brains think. The Heart Sutra reminds us that these five aggregates are empty, and what our six senses experience is 
impermanent. So one of my takeaways from this topic, responding without abiding anywhere, is let go of the past, move on, don't linger, fully live in this precious present moment. We often live in the past. When our minds dwell on the past events, we may end up creating undesirable karma. Don't let concepts and ideas block the self-nature of the void and calm, numinous awareness. In response to sensory conditions, are you aware when you filter experience through the aggregates of your knowledge, concepts, and emotions? If so, switch on airplane mode. Let's connect with our original void and calm state of mind. This state of mind, abiding nowhere, is freeing. It frees us whether we are active or at rest. In understanding the Dharma of abiding aware, flowing water can be a helpful metaphor. So here is a little poem I wrote during a retreat. Chuckling, chuckling, chuckling stream, peacefully dancing in my ears. Sunlight sparkles off the surface. Water flows constantly never the same, always there, yet abiding nowhere. I am sitting still, breathing in, breathing out. Breath flows constantly, never the same, always there, yet nowhere abiding. Our founding teacher composed a Dharma verse at Pongne Hermitage. On the winding road up Pyeonsan Mountain, a rock sits listening to the sound of a stream. Nothing, nothing, but not nothing either. Not, not, but not not either. Here is my translation. A rock sits listening to the sound of a stream without abiding on the sound happening an hour ago or a second ago, without abiding on the idea that the rock is not abiding anywhere. 